In this session, we're going to use this simple line beam model to look at the new direct method influence and Ashto live loading. Now, if I look at attributes, influence, we have two methods. The reciprocal has been in the software for some time and is used for grids and slabs, but the direct method has been added and can be used for grids, slabs, or line beam. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to select force moment, MY. Now the influence type can be unaveraged, averaged, or automatic. I'm going to select automatic, and I'm going to give this attribute the name bending. I'm going to pick two nodes on the model and assign the influence. Now when you assign an influence for the first time, you have to set up the properties of the direct method influence. So I'm going to use search area deck. I'm going to load along a path and the transverse width is going to be set to 24 feet. If I OK this, I get my influences in the analysis tree view. If I run these, I can look at the influence shape. Now I'm going to switch off the fleshing. I'm going to go to the layers, switch off my mesh so I can see the influence shape. Now for this particular influence, what we're looking at is an influence shape for a position on the structure. Now if I go to the influence, right hand mouse button and find, I can see where that influence is. So it's there on the arch. So this is the shape of that influence and I should load the blue areas, but not the red areas to increase bending moment at that location. If I set active the second influence, I get a different shape. I can use the find facility to find out where this is. And again, I should load the blue areas and not the red areas. So at the moment, we've got two influences. Let's go back and create some more. So force moments, I'm going to choose FX in this case, and I'm going to use automatic, and I'm going to call this axial. Once the attributes in the tree view, I can pick a point on my structure. I'm going to pick this point here and drag this on. Now I get two influences at this location, and that's because we have intersecting members. Now the first influence is for this member. The second influence will be for this member. And if I set that second one active, you'll see that I get a different influence shape. Now, as well as using components inside Lusas, I can use the user defined results to create my own influence components. I'm going to choose force moments. And here I'm going to create a interaction equation. So I'm going to choose MY and I'm going to divide that by 100. And then I'm going to add that to the FX component and I'm going to divide that by 500. So it's a MY FX interaction. I'm going to give this the name UDR and then I'm going to select OK. Now if I go back to Attributes Influence, I can now select this from the Force Moment component. So at the bottom, UDR. If I OK this, I get a new influence attribute. I'm going to select a node on my model and assign this to that node. So I've now got six influences in my model. Now, if I set active the UDR influence, this is the influence shape for that location. We can now generate some live load from this model. Now, before I do that, I'm just setting everything all visible because I want to select this line and this line. So these are the limits to where the traffic loading can go, and they're 24 feet apart. Now, if I go to Bridge, Vehicle Load Optimization, I can choose Ashto LRFD. Now, under the settings, I'm going to use the HL93 load, and I'm just going to look at Strength Class 1. For the longitudinal and transverse settings, I'm going to leave those as one foot. Define carriageway, I'm going to select curb from selection to pick up information off these two lines. And then set influences, I'm going to select them all. Now, I want to load the negative or the blue areas of the influence contour, so I'm just setting that up. And then OK. Selecting OK on the main dialog will allow me to generate the load patterns. Now, once these have been generated, I can look at them in the tree view. So over here, if I set active the first load case here, what we're looking at are the lane load patches for the first influence. And this is the associated vehicle. And in this case, you can see that we've got the tandem. If I look at the second influence, again, we've got some live load patches. And if I look at the vehicle that's associated with that, in this case, it's the design truck. 
Now these lane patches and trucks are combining combinations down here. Now before we can view the actual results, I just need to run the analysis. Now I only need to run the last analysis, the previous two are already there. So these are now run, so if I set active one of the combinations, I'm going to look side on to the model, and I'm going to switch on my bending moment diagram layer to see the bending moment diagram. Now at the moment the bending moment diagram is being drawn on the deformed shape. I'm going to switch back on the mesh, and it's then drawn on the undeformed shape. Now what we're looking at here is the bending moment diagram for one of the load positions. If I set active a different load position, I get slightly different results. And I can then take this forward now and do further post-processing on this model.